Mm. I'm sorry, I should probably do some work. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, honey. Hey, you ready? I think so. I got a good start on packing the truck, but can you help me out? Yeah. Today, we're heading out to a great client of ours, Dustin Lammers, to castrate one of his bull calves. Cooler? Yep, got my vaccines. All right, I know we need this. We got the little stool and your castration okay. tools. Here's the disinfectant. Here's this case, you never know. Here's some clippers just in case. Some pour on. Okay. A dewormer. Can't forget that. There's one more thing. Uh, this is just one castration we're doing, right? You can never be too prepared, honey. Are you sure you got everything? <laughs> This is such a pretty place. The Lammers Family Farm. I see Dustin in the back. Hi, Dustin. How are you? Good. It's always been a childhood dream of mine to live on the farm out here, and it's happening. Let's do some cow wrangling. All right. This will be fun. <laughs> we castrate bulls because a bull is really tough to live with around the farm. Good. Those bulls pick on other cattle, and they don't concentrate on doing what they're supposed to do, and that's eating grass. This guy's named Ryder. Ryder. You know, I have a hunch I know how he got that Yeah, name. your hunch is probably correct. He's so. feeling his oats. Yep. <laughs> Today we'll be de-oating him. Let's see, what have we got down here? Oh yeah, there's two jewels down there. So we're gonna go ahead and put this band around the top of his testicles. We're gonna put a tourniquet around the top of the scrotum, and those testicles will fall right off. Okay, the band is applied. That should take about two weeks to do its job. All right, he should be done. Go on, Ryder. Come on, buddy. So Dustin, what's up with your other calf here? His name is Ribeye. We're all done with Ryder. And just looking around at his other calves, it looks like there's one that maybe has some testosterone flowing. I think I can see a swelling from here. Yeah, let's check him out. He's a little more tall, dark, and handsome than the rest. Yeah. See there? This calf is half a bull. So he has one testicle gone and one still there. Somebody tried to take care of him when he was probably a little baby calf and didn't count to two. <laughs> but I won't be able to use our band. I'll have to do a castration here. OK. OK. We're going to use a knife oh, easy. and pull the testicle out because there's no scrotum holding it down where a band can fit on anymore. Just like a cat neuter. There you go. Come on, buddy. No more bowling around for you. He looks good. Perfect. Well, Dustin, I'm going to go ahead and get loaded up. Thank you very much. Well, I don't know about that, Ben. This is a while you're here visit, right? That's correct, yep. <laughs> All farmers have good intentions. They call you out for one reason, but then there's a lot of animals around. And so they kind of ask you, while you're here, Doc, can you look at something else? I got a pig that needs to be looked at yet. <laughs> he needs a deworming shot. What kind of pig is he? He's a pot belly pig. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wilbur! Wilbur! Here he comes! Wilbur! <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur is really spoiled. He just roams around and helps himself and greets everyone that shows up. <laughs> He's so cute. Aaron, give him a listen. All right. We'll try to scratch him real good. Hi, guys. <laughs> this pig is not going to be a fan of this. Where are you going? Uh-oh. I think Wilbur's caught on. <laughs> He's like a pet pig that does whatever he wants, whenever he wants. <laughs> Let's go get him. He's not a happy camper right now. Nope, he's gone to us. He doesn't like needles, I don't think. There he goes. I love his little tail. He's surprisingly agile. All right, you go that way. It's OK, Wilbur. I feel like he's picking the weakest link. There you go, Aaron. Come up on him. <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> well, this is going well. Let's try again. Everybody come in. Hey, Wilbur. Phil. <laughs> I don't care how chaotic it gets, mm -hmm. we're going to get this job done. 
Come here, Wilbur. I'm playing D. Getting low. Give it to him. Okay. Nope, he's not having it today. <laughs> wow. We win, Wilbur. We win. <laughs> Is there anything else we can do for you today, Dustin? I think that's enough uh, excitement for today. <laughs> you too. Guys, I wish you brought your raincoats. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. I like the car. <laughs> this is beautiful. I came across a diamond in the rough, an amazing antique car in our little town of Hardington, way back in the garage. How long has this car been in your family here? 110 years. Wow. So three generations. Three generations. Next week, we're going to load it up and take it out to Aaron's dad, Mike, in New York. It's a surprise. I can't wait to pull it out of the trailer and show Mike for the first time. It's going to be great. He loves to restore old cars, and Ben is yeah. going for son-in-law of the century award. Oh, okay. It literally is of the century, because this car is 110 years old. This car is older than all of us put together. Right. I grew up in an antique car, basically. I went to car shows, we were in parades. It was something really special. OK, guys. Break off. We're on this ramp. Right. There. All right, brakes on. Woo, good job, awesome. guys. I'm just going to ride to New York in this thing. Pretty comfortable. Hi. Hey, what you got? We got a four-week-old Shih Tzu. Can't breathe. OK, oh. Hi. Hi. OK. Val, does she have a name? This is Sadie. We have an emergency right now. We have a client who's just brought in a Shih Tzu puppy that is unable to breathe. I brought Sadie in today because her breathing was very short and raspy. I jumped in the car and I drove over here as fast as I could and came in and said, help. This is the only one, the other ones look okay? Yeah. I know, your babies are up here. There's your baby mama. Definitely see an increased respiratory effort. You can see her kind of using her sides to breathe here. Mm -hmm. Normally, when I listen to lungs that are healthy, you can hear breathing in and out, but it sounds like a whisper. On Sadie's lungs, it sounds like crackly and very harsh, like <gasps> She's really using her belly muscles to try and breathe. Mm -hmm. You got her. We'll try and keep her chin up so she can keep getting oxygen here. OK, oh, geez, this is just climbing like crazy. We're at 103. 103.2, 103.4, 103.5, Val. She shouldn't be higher than about 102, 102.5. And so I know we've got something either infectious or inflammatory going on. Well, Val, this is pretty critical. I feel like if we don't get this puppy so she can breathe better, I mean, you know how fast they go. They just kind of start downhill, and then they just crash and burn. Mm -hmm. It's OK. Caitlin, we got to get an x-ray on this puppy. Can you watch um, Gracie? Just keep her by her puppies. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Val. Sadie's got some pneumonia here. I definitely think she aspirated some milk. She probably got too much milk, and it went down the wrong pipe. So she got milk into her lungs and down her trachea instead of her esophagus. She's definitely got like almost like milk crusty boogers. Milk is a great environment for growing bacteria. So now we have a pneumonia going on, and it's really making it tough for her to breathe. There's not much clear lung field. All right, let's get her some breathing treatments. This is pretty urgent. You're OK. Hang with us. This is a ticking time bomb. Every second counts with Sadie because she is so little. Breathe, Sadie. Come on, little girl. Sadie is a four-week-old Shih Tzu, so we're already dealing with a brachiocephalic breed. They have different characteristics that already inhibit their breathing. And so now to add pneumonia to this really puts Sadie in a very, very critical position. This is an injectable antibiotic. We'll also probably do an oral antibiotic, but right now I don't want to put anything down her mouth because she already can't breathe. And then this is going to be a little very, very tiny dose of a steroid to help those airways with that inflammation. They just can't oxygenate, and then they don't live. Right now, we're at a pulse ox of 54. We should be in the 90s here. This is pretty crucial. Let's turn her up just a hair. Come on, Sadie. You can't breathe in, little girl. 
Oh, she's exhausted. They get mm -hmm. so tired from trying to hold themselves and breathe and exchange that oxygen. Ooh, your mom is worried. It's okay, Gracie. Your baby's okay. This oxygen's really helping. She's starting to breathe more with her chest. Her tummy's even nice and pink. We're not getting purple colored at all. She's really oxygenating well, guys. But I don't feel like we're out of the woods yet because she's only doing this on oxygen. And I think if we pull her off, she'll kind of go back down low. Caitlin, if you can sit on the floor with Gracie and the other puppies so she settles down a little bit, she's just kind of shaking down there. She knows how to count to four, and she's only seeing three puppies. And while she's distracted, Val, let's check those other puppies. This one sounds fine and no fever. So let's put him back. Hi, little baby. Hi. Oh, you look pretty good, buddy. Oh, you're a dummy wound. Oh, are you a big guy? <laughs> yeah, are we boring you? 99.9, Val, and he sounds great. Really, the only puppy that is of concern is Sadie. I am very concerned about her. I've been thinking about her all day. All right, Heather. Hey. We have Sadie stable. But I would really like to keep her and the other puppies and mom here. We'll put okay. them in an oxygen cage today so okay. we can watch them, but she can still nurse. Does that sound okay with you? Yes. I'll call you if anything Sounds changes. Sounds good. Thank okay. you so much, Erin. You bet. I'm so happy I brought her in when I did. I feel like if I would have waited any longer, I don't know that she would be here. The oxygen chamber is basically like an oxygen mask, except it's big enough for the whole family. It's not gonna harm anybody, but the oxygen is gonna stabilize Sadie. We need to support her respiratory system. If Sadie can't breathe, we're not gonna keep her alive. There they are. I came up to Alan and Loretta Sorensen's today. They called in with a big problem on a big horse. What was the situation, Alan? Yesterday morning, I put them in and fed them about 7 o'clock. Everybody was fine. And I got back home about 2.30, and the three geldings were standing out in front of the house. But the mare, babe, was laying out in the corral. And I thought, that ain't good. She stood up, and her back end was towards me, and she had her one leg about six inches off the ground. So then when I went over beside her, I see it was a cut right in the joint. You said a couple things to me that make me very concerned, and that's a laceration over a joint and especially with your type of horses, your draft horses, that can be a big, scary problem. They still use these horses to do all the work around here. It's really, really important that these horses stay in good shape because they go out and do a job. Let's go in and take a look and see what we need to do. You can tell just from this angle how swollen her hawk is there. Why don't we get her out in the light so we can really see things? We've been raising Belgian horses for 48 years now. Babe and her teammate Bob might be our last team, so she's pretty special to us. Oh yeah, now that you can see it out here in the light, oh my gosh. She really hurt that front of that hawk pretty well. It's pretty swollen. We're right over the front of the hawk, and the hawk is a big part of the locomotion of that hind leg, so it makes me nervous. If the joint capsule itself is pierced into or perforated, that's when we really get a problem because then bacteria can get into that joint capsule yeah, and true. that can be sometimes deadly. Mm. Oh, babe, you're Whoa. okay. You're okay. Let's put her over there next to her brother. Maybe she'll settle down. The joint capsule holds all the joint fluid around the joint. If that's popped or broken into, this would be a much more complicated case. I've got some sedation. That way we can keep her calm, but I've got to feel it and see. Right here is the very ouchy part. See that when I touch that? Mm -hmm. With this big of a laceration and just the location of it, if it, she doesn't heal up, that would be tragic. She's such a good horse. Alan, I don't feel like it's into the joint capsule, but she really came close. <laughs> now, the next worry that I have is that potentially we have such blunt force trauma that we maybe broke a little piece of bone or did something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take an x-ray because we could have a fracture. We could have knocked off a piece of the joint and have a joint mouse in there. So tell me when you're ready, Caitlin. You can go for it. Okay. Those are all surgical fixes, so we've gotta make sure we don't need surgery. If Babe has a fracture or something really, really detrimental happened in this hawk joint, she could potentially die.
that something right there? No, we're okay. Very good. Everything looks good. There's no broken bones. We don't have any fractures. Good. The joint capsule appears to be in good shape. Right. So I think most of this uh, is just external, and we got the hide really, really injured. Now it's all swollen. Definitely there's going to be some infection around the joint, which we have to get handled. Yeah. So I want to do a horse leg sweat. The leg sweat we're putting on is basically going to sweat out all the inflammation. We're going to use a couple drugs underneath it, and those are going to help get all this inflammation just sweated right out of that leg. Pretty good little wrap there, and that's going to help that a lot just by giving it some compression and keep the fluids out of there. And we want to keep those fluids, you know, going this way, not down into the foot. We're just delighted that the outcome looks really positive and we're very happy with that. I think she escaped a pretty big life-threatening problem here, thank goodness. Great, you gotta have animals, you gotta take care of them. Yeah. I think it'll take a few weeks for Babe to heal up. So we'll have to come back and see how this is going. And I hope we have some good news. She even got the other leg over the ear. Look at that. <laughs> She's putting all her weight on it now. She says, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I just wanted that support. You did good, OK? <laughs> Hi, little girl. Sadie and her family have been resting in the oxygen chamber now for about three hours. But she's not totally out of the woods. The percent of her blood that's saturated with oxygen needs to be above 90. So we need to check her oxygen levels to see if she can breathe on her own now. If she can't, this could be really critical for Sadie. We could lose this puppy. Yeah, it's OK. Hang tight, little sweetheart. All right, she's breathing a lot easier. Her pulse ox is staying good. She's at 97. She's holding pretty steady, so perfect. I think the breathing treatment definitely helped. Look how nice and pink her belly is. Great job, everybody. I feel like we can all take a little bit of a sigh of relief, even Sadie. It's nerve wracking working on any sort of newborn puppy, kitten, horse, calf. Oh my goodness. Because things can turn so quickly. Shout out to every pediatrician out there. Whew. It's hard work. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Got a basket oh, of babies. Cat <laughs> green tea. Oh, she missed her mom oh. today. Sadie looks so much calmer. Do you think we're in the safe zone with her then? As long as she continues to nurse. Okay. If you can sleep with Gracie and the puppies okay. right near you, yep. and just keep a real close eye. I will. She's had a really That's long day at the vet clinic, is what it looks like. It's going to be uh, another restless night, I'm sure, for all of us, but I will do what I got to do to make sure that my puppies are okay and everybody's happy. Bye, baby. Bye, Gracie. You guys grabbing your suitcases? Yep. I got the one with the good wheels. I think with the whole family, it's been over a year since we've been home. It's been too long. We've got fishing poles, all of our clothes. We've got an old car in the back. I think we're ready. I am so excited. That's all I got to say. You talk to your folks about every day on the phone, mm -hmm. but it's finally time to get you home. Yeah. I'm in a New York state of mind, guys. Whee! I see him. I see him, too. Ooh. That's a big one. Yay! <laughs> we made it! You made it! Woohoo! Hello. It's very special to have Ben, Aaron, and the boys here. Hard to put into words. Just so thankful. What have you got in the trailer? We've got a little surprise for you. You want to see? Sure. Yeah. All right. My dad knows us well enough to not put anything past us. I brought him a dog the last time. That was a big surprise. So. OK. Let her roll, Charlie. Eyes closed. No peeking, Mom. I see you. Oh, my good heavens. <laughs> look at that. What do you see, Dad? Well, I see insignias that point out to me this is a Cadillac. Mike is especially good at getting an old car and just 
making it shine like a penny. She's down. I feel like this is setting the tone for a pretty amazing trip. Ben, thank you so Glad much. Glad you like it, Mike. Today, I'm gonna be lucky enough to go spend some time with one of my veterinary mentors, Dr. Sue Russell. Hi, Sue. <laughs> Sue was a huge influence. When I was 11, 12 years old, I started volunteering at her clinic and learning the ropes, and I worked for her all through high school and even a little bit into college when I was home. I'm excited to help you in any way I can again today. When Erin was at the clinic, she was always eager to learn. It was clear that she had a knack for being around animals. She was always a pleasure to have at the office. Hi. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? Well, <laughs> who is this? This is Harry. Hi, um, Harry. He has some hot spots. He was swimming during the hot weather this weekend, and um, we didn't get dried off well oh, enough, and they it, started to fester. Hot spots. They're really red, itchy, inflamed skin that usually ends up with a bacterial and or fungal infection. There we go. Goldens generally have a heavier, thicker hair coat. When they get wet, it's really hard to get everything dry underneath all that hair and get the skin dried out. He's got lots and lots of scabs. What are you seeing over there, Sue? Well, he has his scabs over here, too, a little bit. Do you normally shave these all down? Yeah. Harry, you might not be so hairy anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is worse than I thought. Darn it all, buddy. He's pretty itchy and scabby here. These hot spots look way worse than I was expecting. Sue is going to prescribe some topicals that will help with the infection and inflammation. Does that feel so good? Oh, he says yes, it does. I'm glad we got him taken care of. He's gonna feel so much better, but for a little while, he doesn't look a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, we're good. Yep. <gasps> there you go, Cookies, oh. I've never known a golden worm <laughs> like a cookie. I just know I'm either gonna catch a hog or absolutely nothing at all. Erin's busy. She's with one of her veterinarian mentors today. Mike's working on the car. So we're gonna go relax and do some fishing. You guys went fishing in this lake an awful lot at camp. Did you guys ever catch anything? Tried to catch stuff, but never really caught anything. Actually. I don't think I ever caught a fish. Any mermaids? Yeah, some hot ones. <laughs> we have a lot of history with this camp. Erin was a camp counselor here. The boys both went to camp here. I love this view. Wow. What a great place. Somebody catch us some supper. I'll catch us some seaweed if you want to be vegetarian. Hey. Hi, oh. Coach. <laughs> Sue, oh. this is going to bring all sorts of feels back. <laughs> coach B was my high school girls basketball coach best coach of my whole life. He was incredibly influential in teaching me a work ethic and composure. He's like a second dad. This is Wilson. Oh my God, <laughs> he's pretty handsome. We brought Wilson in because dad decided to let him loose. Guess what? He got sprayed by the skunk. I smell the skunk. Most of the time, skunk spray causes eye irritation, nasal irritation. However, and in very severe, severe cases, even seizures. I definitely see a little bit of discharge. We noticed that. Is he eating and drinking okay? Fine. Eye ointment will really just help with any inflammation and clear this discharge right up. Are you watching here? Yes, I'm yeah. watching. You'll apply this twice a day. Coach becomes the student. <laughs> <laughs> you stay out of the skunks. Coach B and Dr. Sue, they mean so much to me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's just something you don't recognize at the time when you're a kid. Coach, you take care of yourself. OK. Sue, really, you are my most fantastic veterinary mentor. So thanks for having me back. Well, thank you for saying that. You are. <laughs>
I've kind of cemented that this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'll never forget this day. We'll see you in Nebraska next time. My turn. I okay. guarantee it. That's a heck of a fish, Whoa. I think. Why? It's a big one. <laughs> what do you got? Boy, a rock. Oh. <laughs> hey, Char, you getting anything? No. No, nothing. Enough of this fish. Let's go have some burgers. We're on an elk farm. <laughs> Best behavior. Today, we're at Tom and Gloria's elk farm. This is really a super cool experience because I'm getting to meet up with my large animal mentor who I haven't seen in 22 years, Dr. Palmer. Dr. Palmer, you're usually a, a dairy vet, but what are we doing today on an elk farm? Someone wants to know whether pet elk is pregnant or not and we'll vaccinate her and give her some vitamins and check her out a little bit. Do you boys like to help us? Sure. Of course. All right. At our peak, we had between 130 and 140 animals. Come on. We downsize because we're getting older and it's a lot of work. Well, Tom, this is a little easier than moving cattle. <laughs> it certainly is, isn't it? We have two elk left. One of them is Lulu Bell. We bottle fed her three years ago, brought her up like one of the family. She follows me around like a puppy dog. We just sold 28 animals and uh, we couldn't, I couldn't part with <laughs> my baby. You just push them in. Can you close that gate, please? Hi, Lula Bell. I've never seen an elk or touched an elk, so this is a pretty neat experience. It's kind of like the personality of a buffalo. Kind of the look of a horse. And the medical needs of a cow. So it's a buffa cow horse. Buffa, buffa horse. I love it. Some very coarse hair, isn't it? Yeah. It is not our intention to build the herd back up again. Our days of the uh, large herd are over. Although, I have my fingers crossed that she's pregnant. That looks like something right over there. There, there it is. is. There it is. <laughs> yes. Right there. There's life. Look at it, right there. there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're overjoyed. But I hope we don't have to bottle feed her. <laughs> Perfect. OK. Dr. Palmer, I feel like this is exactly like 22 years ago. It was a cow, not an elk, but you're just as agile. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. It was pretty amazing to be able to finish out our New York vacation, being able to work on an animal that neither of us have ever worked on. She's going to be a great mama. Bye, Lulu. God Bye -bye. bless. See ya. Good morning, hey, good, good morning. morning. Did you uh, have a good night's sleep? We did, and we got everything packed. You know, it would be an awful uh, shame for you to go home with that empty trailer. Why don't you come down to the garage with me for a minute? And so. Brady's gonna want mom to move in. <laughs> Let's go. All right. You can take her back to Nebraska. I'll come pick her up in a month. Grandma and Grandpa have a surprise. Come on over. My dad wouldn't exist like two days without my mom. <laughs> What's in here? Oh my Whoa. gosh. <laughs> a surprise for the four of you. This is a 1929 Model A Ford and has been redone, made in Detroit. Now it goes to Nebraska. Oh, oh this is cool, guys. Thank you so, so much. Oh, yeah. You're so welcome. This car is amazing. All aboard, everybody. It's like we get to walk home, Grandma. Oh. Start it right up. Sounds great. Pinch me. I will, right back here. Oh, not there. <laughs> sure you can't stay another week? As much as we'd love to, we've got a whole bunch of work waiting. The leaving thing never gets easier. I cry my eyes out every time. My parents cry. I'll miss you, Grams. Oh, miss you guys. Come out and visit whenever you want. They're great people, and they made a great daughter. You must want me to drive the first leg. Yes, I do. <laughs> Did it work? No. Bye-bye. Hurry back. Ta 
It's always hard to leave New York, but once we're back, we're reminded why we love this place. Not quite 12 weeks old. No. Nope. He's gonna be enormous. The clinic's not New York, but it still feels like home. Hey, are you growing into your body? Hi. Peekaboo. Morning, John. Morning, Ben. How you doing? Good. Morning, Caitlin. Good morning, John. Do you have a bull with a penis problem, you think? Well, Ben, uh, the other day I brought him up to use him on a heifer, and I noticed some blood coming from his sheath area. Okay. So I'm not sure what's going on. If you can't breed cows, he's not going to last very long on a dairy farm. And John's pretty concerned. Is that him bellering like that? You know, he's really aggressive. That's a good sign that he's got some aggression. Testosterone's high in this one. He's not even a year old, so I'm really thankful he's not a big bull. I'm just going to take a feel on his testicles here. You want to push the gate yep. over? Easy bull. I'd be jumping, too. <laughs> I'm palpating his testicles, make sure they don't feel soft or anything. Because when you're talking blood, you know, that could come from the testicles even. But those feel nice and firm, and everything is just the right squishiness to me. Kind of take a look underneath his belly and see what it looks like. Just hold that gate. Easy, boy. Easy, bull. Oh, my goodness. That's not a happy penis. Looks like he's got a great big wart. The wart seems to be almost like a golf ball in size on, right on the end of his penis. Gonna get nothing bred with that. Not with that. Yikes. Is it something we can remove? Well, you know, a wart is caused by a virus. It really is gonna take his own immune system to fight it off and get rid of that. But sometimes we can help the speed up that process by debulking the wart, which means taking a lot of it off. Okay. And there's a way when we debulk this that we can sterilize it by putting it in liquid nitrogen and then we can put it underneath his skin and that would work like an autogenous vaccine. Okay. Is that something you'd be interested in? Absolutely. If left untreated, this bull could take about six months to heal up. But with treatment like we're doing today, it could take half that long. All right, do you guys want to get some liquid nitrogen and I'll get him sedated? We just got an emergency call, and we have a client bringing in a dog that just got injured. Hey. Hi, Aaron. Hi. So what do we got Hi, going babe. on here? She jumped off the back of the pickup okay. and landed wrong. Maggie is a yellow lab, nine months old. I had a pet porter in the back of my vehicle she was riding in, and I opened the tailgate. She jumped out and took a spill. She seems to have a hip problem or a... Something's wrong with her back end. Oh, pretty bloody back here. She has a cut. She lost quite a bit of blood. Yeah, there's definitely a hole back here. Right away, I can see her anus, and then right next to it is a pretty large puncture wound. And I have no idea how deep this wound is or if there's something stuck in there. Are you guys OK to leave her with us? We'll get her looked at, get her to x-ray. Sounds good. We're going to get her on an IV catheter with fluids because she's really shocky. Also, I want to get her started on an antibiotic right away. All right, Val, let's get Maggie to x-ray and see if we can figure out what's going on. We need to see if we have any foreign bodies stuck in this puncture, if we have a pelvic fracture or a dislocated hip. Good news, Val, is that her pelvis isn't broken. There's no fracture and there's no foreign objects or debris in the wound. She has an enormous bladder. I'm very, very concerned. I think Maggie's lameness is really stiffness and soreness from the fall. But what I'm more worried about is that we may have a tear or some sort of issue with her urethra and being able to urinate properly. So I'm going to send her outside to see if she can urinate. Uncle Patty. If she can't urinate, all of those waste products are going to start building up in her blood and start making her toxic. Just dribbles. Not enough pee. That's not normal. <sighs> Hey, a little sleepy medicine. This poor bull has a huge wart on the end of his penis. It smells bad. I don't wish this on my worst enemy. There we're in. That should do it. Now, before he goes to sleep, we better let him out. <laughs> 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 
Night, night, little guy. The most effective way to treat warts, especially in bulls, is to debride it, get it removed, freeze the stalks, which is where the wart's coming off the body. Let's get them all prepped here and injecting it right inside the body of the bull. And it's just basically like giving them a vaccine. Look at all these warts on his neck. Ooh. He's got the wart virus going all yep, through him. Yep. We'll get it fixed. We've got to move quickly. We've got about a half hour of time to do everything before things kind of get critical for him and we need to start getting him up. Wow. Look at that. Ooh. Looks like there's two of them. He's got a little wart here and a huge wart on the tip of his penis. I'm just gonna debulk this with my fingers. We're gonna just take our hands and pull the wart tissue away. Wow, look at that. It looks like a big old gnarly mess. Yuck. But it's connected by a little tiny stalk. There it was. That little one peeled right off. Here, Caitlin, stick it in the liquid nitrogen. And that's gonna sterilize it and allow me to put it safely in the neck of this bull. Could he have permanent damage from this? I I've never seen this cause permanent damage. This looks better already. All right, Caitlin, ready for surgery? I'm always ready for surgery. <laughs> Good. All right, we got the site prepped here. Making my incision. Let's go ahead and get a frozen wart. I'm gonna just put pieces of that wart right underneath the skin. Some of the proteins of the virus are going to kind of jolt the immunity of the cow. Okay, Caitlin, why don't you grab some of the pieces of wart Go ahead and put it right in that pocket. The amount of virus that's in the tissue is extremely high. So even just small little chunks has many, many million particles of virus. All right, so we're just gonna close that up. All right, let's wake him up. Come on. You roll up. It was a big procedure for this little bull, but it really had to happen today. There you go. And hopefully in about three or four months, be ready to breed some cows. All right, big guy. You'll feel better. Good job. How's it going, Val? Hi. She's in a potty spot for like a minute. She's trying to go. Not enough is coming out. OK. We're going to go ahead and do a cystocentesis to take the pressure off the bladder. That's where I stick a needle in the bladder and actually draw out the pee manually. So there is her huge bladder. We'll go ahead and try to empty that down because I don't want that thing to rupture. It's pretty cloudy. You're being a really good girl, Maggie. So almost a half a liter of pee. I'm not seeing any blood in Maggie's urine, so that really reassures me that we don't have any urethral tears. But there's definitely some other factors at play that are causing these urinary issues. I think that's where we'll quit for now. Hi, sweet girl. Does that feel good? Better? Ooh. So now we can get some blood work and make sure that the rest of Maggie is actually doing OK, too. I'm also going to take a look at this urine and see if this gives us any clues as to why she's not urinating properly. All right. You rest there. Erin, I found one of her problems. Oh, my gosh. That is a ton of urinary crystals. Although that had nothing to do with her tumbling down after getting out of the pickup, that may be playing an important role in her ability to urinate. Certainly with all of that tissue swelling, if she has some debris or bladder sand, as we call it, with so many crystals, that may be just enough with that inflammation from her wound and her tumble that that's why we can't urinate. We're going to switch Maggie's diet to a food that ultimately will dissolve these crystals. That's a great sign. Oh. I'm going to keep Maggie overnight and continue to watch and see if we can take down this soft tissue swelling so she can start to urinate on her own. All right, you. How you doing this morning? Let's see if you go potty. Go potty. Good girl! Yay! Dog pee has never made me so happy, little girl. 
Maggie is doing great. She's gone pee. She's eating all her food. She's drinking water. So we're going to keep her on her antibiotics and some pain meds. And keep her on a diet to get rid of the urinary crystals. No stitches, no nothing. Your non butt butthole looks good too. Yeah. Oh, there's pee pee. Oh, that looks so much better. <laughs> We're going to leave her wound to heal by closing in naturally on its own. And I'll send home some therapy for the owners to keep that area clean. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Yeah? yeah. There's Maggie. There. Hey, how are you Maggie, guys? Maggie, hi. Aaron. <laughs> guys, I think Maggie got pretty lucky on this, didn't you, girl? Yeah. Sometimes an animal comes in for an emergency, and then another issue that's just as critical pops up. Things could have been so much worse. Everybody missed her tremendously. You know, she still has a little bit of a road ahead of her, but we'll get her back to where she needs to be. I'm gonna miss you, girl. There they are. Hey, Loretta. Hi, Hello, Alan. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. <laughs> Today, Laurel and I get to come up to the Sorensons, and we're going to check out Babe to see how she recovered from her almost devastating injury. Oh, my gosh, she's a babe. She looks so beautiful. I tell you what, she didn't lose any weight, did she, Alan? No. She looks great. I would like to see her just move around the yard here a little bit. You bet. And let's see if she takes any lame steps. That's a beautiful sight right there. I'm so happy. It looks like that did not for sure get into the joint, yeah. or else we'd have a horse that's kind of lame. Mm -hmm. And I see no lameness with her at all. Let me take a really good look. I'm going to get my hands on it, too. Just hold her nice and steady for me. Yeah. There's really uh, hardly any scar. You know, there's still a divot there, and there always will be a little bit of a divot there. But as bad as this possibly could have been, I think this is best case scenario for you and Babe. You never want to see your horses be lame or be hurt or in any pain. We appreciate the work she does, but we just enjoy her as a pet, too. All right, Alan, I'm giving her a clean bill of health. Well, thank you. Dr. Ben gave us a go-ahead, so now it's time for her to go to work. I know the Sorensons love their draft horses, and they've done everything they could to get Babe better, and all this work has paid off. So Babe is ready to go plow. She's ready to go plant. She's ready to go do all these things that she loves to do. My favorite part about this car, the horn. I <laughs> think the horn has to warm up. This is going to be amazing. 1929 car out in front of the hotel. Preserving the hotel was a labor of love for us. And now, seeing this old car in front of the hotel, it's like everything has come full circle. It's like they were meant to be together. All right, I got my right turn signal on. Pull on in. Hotel Hardington, here we come. Now, I'm not really sure how we're going to get out of this. <laughs> One leg at a time. <laughs> I think our ice cream days are over. She looks nice parked in front of there. Yeah. 